Welcome. Welcome to Trinity Presbyterian Church. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Come, let us worship. We come so God can teach us goodness and love for each person. We will complete God's love by having the same compassion as God. We come so Jesus can lead us into lives of service and obedience. We will complete Jesus' hopes by putting others before ourselves. We come so the Spirit can help us to empty ourselves for God and those around us. We will complete the Spirit's peace by sharing our lives with others. Let us worship God. is always saying, let's let bygones be bygones, while doing or saying the same hurtful things over and over. Another does wrong, but stops to look at themselves and allows God's grace to transform their heart and their words and behaviors, which is faithful to God's hopes for them. Let us reflect for a few moments in silence, and then we'll pray together the words for forgiveness. We could do what you hope, God of our salvation, but we get so distracted in our fears that we don't. We continue to fill ourselves with pride's empty calories and wonder why are we still hungry? We feed our own needs for security and importance first. And so maybe we don't even notice those behind us or under us who struggle in life. We proudly say we're willing to forgive while never honestly taking notice that our own suspicions and our own jealousies cause us to hurt others. Forgive us mercy of our lives. May we complete your love by caring deeply for those who make life so difficult for us. 
May we complete your hope by reaching out to those in need. May we complete your grace by emptying ourselves for all around us, just as Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, did for us. Amen. Plant this good news deep in your thoughts. God loves you. God forgives you. God strengthens you for service. May God's compassion make us more passionate to serve. May God's forgiveness make us more merciful. May God's love make us more loving to everyone. Thanks be to God. Let us worship God. God is always with us, not just when everything seems clear and times are good, but also when we struggle with questions and doubt. When we cry out to God, our prayers are heard. When the world cries out to God, we are part of God's answer, offering water in the desert, offering nourishment to a world that is spiritually hungry. Our gifts this morning are our answer to God's own goodness. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. As we share from our abundance loving God, may we empty ourselves of our desires for more, but seek to extravagantly give away grace, love, hope, and wonder with everyone we meet. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy
Our gospel reading this morning begins as we are overhearing Jesus talking to the religious officials of his day. They are stuck in old predictable ways and they not only rejected John the Baptist when he came, but they also could not possibly believe that Jesus' new ways could be anything but trouble. Incline your ear to the teaching of God's word as found in the gospel of Matthew Chapter 21, verses 23 through 32. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. For if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. And Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we pray and we wonder what does it profit us to gain the whole world and lose our souls. In the din of demands and distractions, send your spirit, we pray, to help us to discern your word and your will. Grant us ears to hear and 
to have the faith to obey your teachings that offer life and life abundant. In Christ's name, we do pray these things. May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Have you been feeling some of the stress of this wilderness season? How are you doing? Are you managing? This may feel like a new experience, right? Because there are not too many of us who have lived through the Spanish flu of 1918. And yet if we pause and we really look at this season, this season that we are in, and we consider its impact upon us, we might actually recall other times all along life's journey that have challenged us in similar ways, right? Some recent experiences connecting to past experiences might be a sense of loss. Or maybe it's that sense of not being able to do what we want to do when we want to do it, right? Having restrictions placed on us, ugh. Or maybe it's the challenge of not being able to foresee, to see into the future and know what's going to happen next. We wonder, what are things going to look like when we get to the other side of all of this? What is going to be different? And what, if anything, will return to being the same as it ever was? What new permanent losses am I going to have to adjust to? What losses am I going to have to endure? Do any of these thoughts elicit a response from you? Do you maybe feel your stomach do a somersault when one or more of these are mentioned? Or where in that litany did you begin to hold your breath, catch your breath, or feel your shoulders rise a little? Maybe your mind was flooded with a thought or a memory, maybe the mention of not being able to do what you want brought to the foreground of your mind the thought of oppressive restrictions being placed on you at different times. Maybe it was a, a thought that from your childhood, or I guess maybe it would be more from when you were a teenager. Did you suddenly remember that time when you were not allowed to go out with your friends, right? We've all experienced that. No, you're not going out. <laughs> We've experienced that from our parents. Or maybe just at the mention of loss, you felt the ache in your heart that is caused by the passing of a loved one, perhaps a brother, a friend, a parent, a spouse. Life's journey can be long and stressful, but I don't need to be telling you that, do I? You've seen it. You've known it. You've experienced it. You've experienced the stress that life can bring firsthand. You know just how chock full of seasons and cyclical moments life is, moments that challenge that continual journey of discovery and believing that God's promises are true, that God's sustenance can and does take place, even in the most adverse and unexpected of places. You have lived through moments that are for such a time as this. You have discovered and you have been surprised at how true God's promises are. You have weathered the storms, the seasons, both long and short, that make up the narrative of your life's journey. We each, at some point in time, have stood at the edge of what seemed to be an endless abyss, wondering just how we were going to be able to get to the other side. But we did it. You did it. With God's help, you did. Now, we're not the only ones who have known firsthand the stress of wilderness living. We are not the first ones to stand on the edge of what seems to be an abyss of the unknown. 
In a series of narratives found in our scriptures, we walk alongside of our ancestors as they journey from enslavement to the opportunity of freedom. And theirs, like ours, <laughs> it was not an easy one. <laughs> and it was long. And it not only engaged them physically, it engaged them spiritually, calling for a transformation, a transformation from an earlier existence, an earlier way of being as an enslaved people to that of a new nation. It was truly a journey of the soul. So if we pop into their story at the point where we are in our lectionary and how, where our lectionary drops us in, we find that they are still early into their adventure, about two months in to what becomes a 40-year journey. But we we find them standing at the edge of that seemingly eternal abyss. And as they stood there, what they had always known the way of life that they had become accustomed to stretched out far behind them. And what stretched out before them was yet to be formed. And so when they stood at the edge of that expanse, <laughs> they started growing a little uncertain, a little bit of fear. Fear began to bubble up inside of them. A little bit of doubt and a little bit of angst began to take a hold. <laughs> and so they complained. For unlearning habits, ways which we have grown accustomed to is difficult, painful, and requires patience. It is the work of generations. Now, even though Israel found themselves to be the recipients of God's kindness and mercy, they were standing there a little uncertain. Even though God's presence had been with them, both visually and tangibly, for God had already secured victory over the Egyptians. God had already enriched them with the wealth of their former captives, God had made way through the Reed Sea and provided regular supplies. So standing there, their knees began to quake and they were quite uncertain about just how much trust they could put into the Lord because life was looking different. Life was looking different than it had under the rule of Pharaoh. And so they started to complain. The book of Exodus tells us in chapter 16, the whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, that is Aaron and to Moses, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord while we were still in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, as they stood in front of that unknown, their fear began to ramp up, as it does, right? We've all known that. We've all experienced that. They began to wonder and they began to question. As they're standing at the edge of that wilderness, hungry and thirsty, filled with all of that uncertainty as to what was waiting for them around that next bend, they began to look back. They began to look back, forgetting how they had prevailed, simply by having Moses raise his hand. Slipping from their mind was the bitter water turned sweet. They stood there at that edge, forgetting the pillar of cloud and fire that had led them safely so far. They, for a moment, forget that even there in the wilderness, God hears them and God is responsive. God heard their angst and heard their worry, and God provided. As they were there in Rephidim, the setting for today's text, filled once again with all of that worry, God goes and sends Moses to walk back out in front of them. But he sends them but he sends Moses 
while holding that staff. Do you remember that staff? That staff that had the prominent part in all of the miracles that had led to their release from Pharaoh? God sent Moses with that staff, symbolizing that release, symbolizing that God was with them, symbolizing all of those miracles, and offered them sustenance of water in the desert. For where God leads, God does provide. Deliverance comes, but not by way of removing them from that desert, but instead in the present sustenance and provision of God. A table is spread in the very presence of their enemy, and they receive the life-giving gift of water where only rocks could be found. They are given the gift of food and nourishment when only the hard, barren land is underfoot. There is a gift of healing where the pain never ends. A sanctuary is provided, but it is in the wilderness, says author Terence Fretham. Have we encountered storms of life? Yeah, sure we have. Have we weathered those storms? Indeed, yes, we have. We have experienced hardship in life, and we have come out on the other side. We have had experiences that have rocked our world and shifted our perceptions, yet left us with new understandings and a bit more wisdom and a bit more insight. And so as we encounter these newest storms of life, know that we will prevail. Mm, We will. For God provides the resources that respond to our every need. God is still out there in the lead, leading and calling. And sometimes God comes alongside of us, slipping the arm through ours when we need to lean. And then there are those other times that God comes around to the backside and provides that push forward when we need it. And so as we think of our church family here, our community here at Trinity, I want you to know that there are still many amazing ministries happening and taking place, and many that God is calling us to. There are prayer groups, Bible studies, new groups continue to be formed. Courageous conversations are taking place every Tuesday at 430 There is a meeting for those struggling with grief in the works. And we are hearing the cry from those preparing to provide shelter for those without a roof of their own in the coming cold weather. We have so many gifted and wonderfully talented people all around us, willing and able to share their amazing talents and gifts with us. From our music ministry team with Ryan and Jen, Linda and Lindy, to the ministry led by our team, such as the care team and the stewardship team, we are strengthening and growing. In fact, a really fun event that you do not want to miss is being hosted by our stewardship team, the Good News event. And this is being held on October 7th, and it begins at 5 p.m. So go mark your calendar and come on out to join us for this celebration. This celebration is of you, of each and every one of you, to come and receive a complimentary meal while we safely fellowship together outside on our church campus. We are so grateful here at Trinity, for we see the divine activity everywhere, providing for us just as he did for our ancestors. Ours is a journey. It is a journey of learning and of becoming. It is of becoming a new nation grounded in the knowledge of a God who brings water up out of the rock, order out of chaos, life out of death. God's creative work continues. And so I would like to close today with us turning together to a little book, Blessings for the Soul. This can be found inside. This can be found inside of the pretty purple bag. 
that each household member and friend of Trinity should have received by now. With deep gratitude from our little ad hoc team, Linda and Sharon, Charlene, Pam, Carol, and Cami, and so many others. So I hope you have received yours. But if you haven't, let us know, because that means we need to update our contact list. So if you have your book, let's go ahead and open it up to page 13 together. God is moving. May you dare to believe that God is moving in your life because he is. He makes all things new and he intends to dismantle the schemes of the enemy. Will you trust him? May your next steps be faith steps and your next words, faith words. May you embrace a joyful heart, not because of what your eyes see, but because of what your heart knows God is good. He is for you and he will not fail you. And now turning to page 25, remember his love. Remember God's love, God's faithfulness, God's heart of affection for you. Rest in God's grace, rely on God's love and rehearse God's promises because they're true for you. May God add to our understanding and strengthen our faith. Amen. Please join me in our confession of faith using Paul's words to the Romans. We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. We are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. 
Loving God, we are tempted to give in to constant quarreling with you, with one another, with leaders and friends, fellow believers, and even random strangers. Our world is awash in animosity and fear, anxiety and distrust. Even though we know we are to be in the world but not of it, we find it hard not to mirror the discord and anger that we see all around us. And so it is, Lord, that we humbly come before you this Lord's Day and ask you to intervene, to work within us, so that we have the ability to turn away from those actions and attitudes that prevent us from fulfilling your purpose through us. We pray the strength to turn toward the one who shapes us for your service. As the world reels with upheaval, use us to bear witness to your peace. As the headlines reverberate with bad news, use us to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. As our communities wrestle with wicked problems, use us to exercise holy imagination that helps the new thing you are doing emerge. As so many grow weary and worried, use us to bring relief and hope. Merciful God, our prayer lists are long and we cannot possibly name all of the people, places, and circumstances in need of your compassion and transformation. We trust that you know our hearts and hear our pleas, even when they are left unspoken. So we pray, pour out your care on those devastated by fires and floods. Wrap in love your children who cry to you in lament for all they have lost and cannot imagine living without. Grant your unwavering strength to your prophets, speaking the truth in love to many as yet unable to hear it. Give your peace that passes understanding to those overwhelmed with anxiety and afraid of what tomorrow might bring. Confident that you know the needs and are already present and at work in every corner of creation, we humbly turn over to you those things that we can no longer carry. Astonished that you enlist us to do your will on earth, we ask for you to show us what we ought to take on in order to be faithful to your call. We make our prayer in gratitude for your grace and in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, as God's chosen one, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. Go now knowing God's peace, now and forevermore. Amen.